Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys wanted to follow me around on the internet, uh, YouTube, Twitter, all that fun stuff, head on over to my over to my website. And for now, it's the very last article. Uh, I still have to make a quick link at the top so that you guys can check that out. Um, and before you know, I get into the drawing today, I may as well just bring it over here so you guys can see it. Uh, I did want to just talk about, you know, all the new stuff that's happening this week since the last episode and all that good stuff. Uh, but before I get into that, I wanted to say thank you guys so much. Uh, the show wouldn't be possible without everybody that's sharing, liking, uh, retweeting, uh, sending me private messages, asking for help, uh, saying thank you, uh, the hate mail, all the good stuff, <laughs> the whole package. Uh, you know, this would just be a diary for myself. And it uh, wouldn't be as fun if it wasn't for all you guys out there. So thank you guys so much. And like I say, this hour is meant for you guys, even though uh, I do have an idea of what I would like to cover. But if you guys ever have a comment or a question or something that you guys might need help with and I might be able to help you with it, please leave it in the chat on live stream here in all capitals. That way I can see it. Uh, and if you're watching the recorded version on YouTube, thank you. Uh, please give it a like if you enjoy it. And if you have a question... Please leave it in the underbar below. I'll try to get to it in the next week's live stream. Uh, and these are every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If I can't get to them, uh, you can look forward to the, the every month or every month and a half video that I do. It's a little Q&A, and I try to hammer out all, all the questions that I miss or that I just can't get to um, for other reasons. But, um, yeah, so here on my website, it's still kind of moving around. You guys can hardly, I don't know if you guys can really actually tell what, what's going on here and stuff. But, um, so this new uh, article that I just posted today uh, is pertaining to Castle Dracula, which we will probably talk about today. Um, and all I'm talking about here is just kind of um, mostly about mini comics in general, why I think they're so cool, why everybody should be doing them. Uh, I don't really do what you want. Everybody's allowed to do what they want. I just highly recommend doing mini comics at least once a year. Uh, it, they're very rewarding. And it's been a very long time since I've been able to do one, so you guys have heard me talk to death about this stuff. But uh, I have a tentative release date, which will be October. Uh, falls in line with Halloween, so it should be a magical time <laughs> for all that. Also, uh, on the left here, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, you can check out all my current uh, main projects that I'm working on. Uh, that are actually any kind of relevance at all. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Castle Dracula, it's actually the pre-writing is all done. I'm all done with the pre-writing. Uh, so I will be starting my first draft script uh, pretty soon. And then the rest of these projects are slowly going to get hammered out. Um, and then the last thing, just I guess one more last thing before we uh, get into the good stuff, is uh, I soft launched my Patreon account last night. And uh, so far, uh, I've actually got somebody um, as a subscriber, so <laughs> awesome. This is all new to me. I kind of quickly looked over it uh, just to kind of see what's going on here. I will be releasing some free content on here as well. So even though if you go up here and it says give $10 per month, uh, you can actually change this, this amount. I have no idea why it's 10 If somebody can tell me in the chat if you happen to know, uh, let me know because, you know, I hey, 10 bucks a month, hey, that, thank you. That's fantastic. If you want to give anything... By all means, put it in there. And just a quick rundown of what this is from what I understand. Uh, you can always cancel an account or uh, a subscription. And it doesn't cost you anything. I'm not putting any kind of paywall behind any content that I wouldn't release for free. Uh, however, anybody that does subscribe to this, uh, there will be some free little goodies here and there. Uh, I will be releasing them soon so that anybody that is subscribing, they can get that. And uh, you can put a cap and all that fun stuff. But this is just, you know, if you wanted to just throw a dollar my way or something just to say thanks, that'd be appreciated. All the money that I get from this stuff, I'm making a very focused effort to just put right back into the community, whether it's uh, more content that you guys want or uh, just, like I say, my mini comics are just helping me get my personal comics and dreams out there. So thanks, everybody, again, for any kind of support. I know a few people have talked about it. So here we go. We got it up. Um, and we can kind of get stuff going on there soon. And if you wanted to check it out, it's just patreon.com slash my name, Jonathan Rector. And, uh, okay, so let me just close this up here. This is for Worlds in Peril. I'm um, in Photoshop here, working on the inks. Uh, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. I'm glad to be back on this. I, I just had a little bit of a, a hiccup. Not a hiccup. I just had a buddy that needed some art done uh, for a wedding, so I was able to do that. Um, but today we're going to be in Manga Studio 5, 
So just let me save this up here and close it, and we're going to work on some Castle Dracula. Uh, I'll probably talk a little bit about it, and again, if you guys have any questions, if I can help you on that, I definitely will. So let me just close Photoshop, and we'll get Manga Studio going. There we go. And let me just uh, scroll up here, because I think we've had just a little bit here. Uh, Ian saying, hey Jonathan, I've been playing around with your Castle Dracula character in Photoshop, trying to learn digital, and was wondering if you'd like to take a look at a very simple work in progress, interested in feedback. Uh, for sure, just I'll post a link in the chat, and I, I'll uh, bring it up for everybody, and then we can kind of critique it, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yes, this stream's uh, live, this one's the good one. <laughs> the link that I sent earlier today apparently uh, w was wrong. Uh, thank you. The pencils are looking pretty good. Thank you. Jonathan, you had a pitch video about Ninja Turtles. Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm slowly working on that in the background. As I whittle down projects, uh, you know, that's the, the video that I'm putting uh, some, some serious time behind. It's not like massive production values or anything. It's just it's a pretty big time commitment, and there's a lot of things going on with it. And I just want to make sure that it's structured well so that you guys can get, you know, uh, click here to do this, uh, to go all the, all the way there. All that, the pre-work's done. It's literally just doing the actual grunt work, uploading the videos and stuff like that. So it's going along. I would probably, I'm hoping to get it done by the end of this month. If I'm lucky, there are comic pages that need to be done there, so that will probably take a little bit more time. And Ian has a link here, so just let me click that, guys. And then we can critique the art. Da, da, da. Hopefully it's not... Well, that's not the link at all. Copy link. Alright, please don't be naughty pictures, just in case. Let's get it over here. Uh, okay, so... Let's click, click. Just going to copy, and we'll make a new layer here. Uh, I don't even know why this file is open. <laughs> Let's get a new one. File new. Let's get a new piece of paper here and draw on that. Okay, so we got this, and let's paste. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, oh, sweet. So it looks like you're going to be doing some digital painting here. Uh, yeah, you're doing... Um, I guess this is like a, a whole different version of what my character, or my Castle Dracula character looks like. Uh, his name's Pierre, by the way, so it's probably easier to uh, call it that as opposed to something else. Um, okay, so since it looks like you're doing a, a totally different style approach here um, than the look that I have uh, currently. Uh, all I can do, I guess, would be just critique uh, anatomy and stuff. It looks like like this. Uh, this is, uh, for me, this is a c sort of a shame because this right here, that body looks awesome. And then here, uh, it's like you, it feels like you kind of got, I don't want to say scared, but you went too stiff with it. The energy in this is, is top notch. Um, you got this really cool shape to them too where it's like these massive arms and everything kind of comes down But in here, it's like you you went opposite here um, Kind of went back into like the feminine pose where his hips look like they're uh, you know a Little bit too wide, um, but a, a quick solution here. Honestly, if this is still the stage you're at I'd probably just make these arms bigger And then I'll give them a little bit more of a masculine look uh, His face looks fine um, and, and try to see if you can bring this leg. I would probably bring this leg in myself. Then you can shoot this one out. Just so the idea is you're, you're sh he's shooting that chest out. Uh, so if we turn that layer off, just so you can see the structure drop. So this is where I'm kind of going with it, where the energy is being forced out. Um, whereas in here, it, it's, it just feels like uh, some of the anatomy is, is kind of a little wonky in... Uh, in those areas but I mean regardless even if uh, you know I can tell you're doing a, a, a grayscale digital painting I'll probably try to be more realistic which is absolutely fine uh, 
but there is some anatomy issues up in here uh, and, and this right here uh, if I can give you one little one little heads up this whole spot right here unfortunately what you've done is all of this is flat um, and the the ribbons that you put on his arm it, you flattened out all that work that you that you did all the structure drawing that you did underneath you flattened it um, so quick solution and again uh, I don't know if these arms are supposed to be behind him like as if you're pushing your shoulder blades behind behind them uh, like trying to squeeze a grape between your shoulder blades uh, but just a real quick thing that you can do uh, and it shouldn't take you long at all is if you got his arm here uh, remember that there's a perspective going here so just start doing this action with the ribbons that'll help push the perspective and if it's going in the opposite direction like I said like he's squishing something behind him uh, then you just bring him this way uh, because unfortunately you have it flat right there and it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a no-no and and yeah other than that awesome keep it up Oh no, don't worry about cartooning and stuff. Just draw the way you like to draw. Don't worry about if it uh, looks like a certain... If it, if it if you draw like I do or not. Don't ever, I don't think you should ever worry about that. Okay. Let's get a pencil tool here. All right, so today um, I'm not quite sure what I wanted to draw with the Castle Dracula stuff with you guys. Um, Manga Studios freaking out here. Uh, so I've got Pierre pretty much nailed down with his costume design. Uh, there's some action shots that I'm trying to figure out too with, uh, you know, um, just how the whip will work and things like that. Some of the bad guys I have yet to design. So I was thinking to do that. I think you guys probably... Uh, you guys let me know. Would you rather do some monster design or the other thing that I have to do some quick work around with is uh, location uh, so there is a small village and the castle itself I won't be doing any interior stuff it'll mostly be uh, exterior castle stuff that's in the distance so either way the work's got to be done you guys just let me know what you guys might like uh, to see anyway um, Ian saying that he's still struggling to get used to the tablets uh, you know just keep you're gonna struggle it's never going to go away. You just learn to manipulate it, control it a little bit better. So keep doing what you're doing. Like, it looked awesome. Uh, how will I be designing my Dracula? Uh, I want to keep him close to how Dracula looks, but the theme of this is still off of Castlevania, the video game. Uh, so there are some parallels that I would like to have him look in there. Uh, definitely like the slick face. Uh, he's probably a little beefier and all that stuff like that. And I sort of uh, don't want to show you guys Dracula. <laughs> Just because uh, in the comic, I want... Like, there's a wait until you see him. And then there's the reveal. Not in a way that it's like, oh, wow, look how cool it is. But it's, it's Dracula. And it's called Castle Dracula, right? So I want there to be a little bit of a payoff. So once you get to him, it's like, right, now, finally this person is showing up sort of thing. Um, so in the beginning, there's some monsters. Maybe we'll just do that then. So there's some monsters. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I wanted them to be ghouls or spiders or maybe spider ghouls or spider men things. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe we'll just figure some, some things out uh, as we go here. So I just want to start scribbling around so we can get some, some body language. And I want to keep... I have in the back of my mind that I can possibly do more mini comics with this character uh, since what he likes to do is he's just a castle hunter he likes to hunt castles most castles the coolest looking ones they're usually possessed by bad people and uh, so he usually deals with them but there's so many cool monsters out there and it still plays with the Castlevania theme where you could have Castle Frankenstein you know Castle, castle Wolfman Castle Hyde you know and um so I, some of those monsters, 
I might not ever do those books. It doesn't matter. But some of those monsters, I want to sort of see if I can keep themed to that. Uh, so the undead, maybe I could have like castle undead, something like that. So what I'm trying to, th what I'm thinking then is that my bad guys should probably be like not maybe maybe not spiders, but maybe just bat creatures, you know, bat kind of stuff. Uh, what's that? The monster vampire design in Vampire Hunter D series is a good reference. Let me just write that down. Vampire Hunter D. He's the guy that's got like that big gold like witch hat, right? I believe. So let's see if we can design some uh, bat-like creatures. Draw Pierre fighting uh, Jessup. <laughs> Uh, let me just get this off here because I do surf the internet with uh, maturity turned on. So let's see uh, bats. I want to bring some reference in here so I can have this while I'm designing these kinds of creatures here. Um, all right, I know there's those things. There's vampire bats. They might look a little different. I don't know. Oh, they're the furry dudes. They're the cool looking ones. Sweet. Oh, that's disgusting. Some of these are gross. Okay, I want to stay away from cute. Let's get a gross one here. This one looks kind of gross. So if you guys don't like scary looking bats, if you got a bat phobia, whatever the hell that is. I apologize. But uh, it's all in the name of reference. Dun, dun, dun. Look at this guy. Creepy. All right, so um, the body, I, I have that on another window. So what I'm going to do here is uh, first, when I like to design this kind of stuff, is just start trying to draw the reference I'm looking at rough, uh, not spending a lot of time making it perfect. But it's mostly just trying to see what shapes my, my mind kind of remembers. And again, it's not, uh, and, and this is just my opinion, and this is the way I, I like to work with this stuff, but it's not about drawing a realistic bat in this case, but it's trying to just find little keystones that I might remember with a shape or uh, something so that when people can see it, at least the basics are there, you know. Like, so far this could be like a really weird looking dog. I got some really wild teeth going on in here. Pretty thick. Some like ribbed ears. Now there's a there's uh in the beginning here uh it's mostly just like a hand to hand com combat i don't really want um flying ones just yet i think the flying stuff kind of just makes it like a they can leave sort of thing uh so what we're going to do here is sort of design these guys as like the melee versions the guys that are just kind of walking around they're like the the brutes in a way um, and I want them to be a little stupid, so edit, cut, edit, paste. This is a real gross way of doing this. Alright, so let's start designing something here. Just give me some more space to draw here. Right, I do like the hunched over look for these guys because they're bad dudes. Um, and uh, the thing to remember that this is a mini comic, so details I'm trying to keep pretty uh, pretty minimum. I don't want to go in here and start worrying about like if they got like a billion weapons hanging off them and stuff like that. Just simple design. Give them like the triangle shoulders here. Gotta have the long arms, just makes them look gnarly. Maybe what we'll do is their wings. 
maybe maybe we'll do like a sort of like a Batman kind of thing here, where their wings are just sort of like a cape. They don't work. They're not connected to anything. I'm just gonna have them looking over to the side here. Let's give them some interest, like something's perked perked them up here. I want to give them that big nose because that looks kind of wild. A lot of room for like a real weird eye. Massive ears. Rip them up a bit. These guys aren't friendlies. They could probably have like a wicked mouth too. That'd be pretty cool, eh? Get some classic monster stuff with giant mouth. Nobody wants to go near that. I got like that sort of main kind of thing going here. Making some cylinders here just to push his, his hips back. I don't want to keep. I don't want these guys ripped, right? I want them to be pretty skeletal as well. Um, but their hands—that's where we're gonna get the real nerve fest here. Okay, so that's one design, and what we'll do is we'll just move it over, and we'll do it again. Let's see if we can come up with something different here. So, uh, actually, let me save this up here. Gas Dracula. What do we got here? Concepts. Um, we'll call them Batman, just for. <laughs> Just to be gross. Save it. Alright, so we kind of had the hunched over bat here. Uh, I know uh, Dracula, he's going to be very straight back. He's got to have that, at least in my mind anyway, he has that very charming look to him. He doesn't really look villainous. Uh, so his minions, maybe the minions are a little uh, straight as well. Trying to feel this out here, see what's see what's coming to us. That doesn't look threatening. Okay. So something that's happening right now uh, that I'm just thinking of as we go here is uh, if I'm straightening these guys out, they are starting to feel like the Dracula that I want uh, him to look like. Uh, so I definitely don't want that. I want them to be polar opposite. So what else can we do with the triangle here? Let's try doing just generic shape stuff here. So I feel a sharp shape still. Something comes up here. Okay, so I'm starting to see something here. So maybe we'll put a, a claw hand up here. And like these gnarled hands that are all still those sharp triangles. A little twist in his body here. You guys probably can't really see what's going on. Um, so this guy's bat wings, maybe they just kind of drape off his arm as like weapons. 
I actually don't mind that. That might be pretty cool. If, like, his arm flares out, like, in an attack, you know? Like this. And he's got his, his fist, we'll say. It's sort of like how Batman has his little, like, thing here. This one would just be the... The actual wings. But they probably will put, like, little, like, serrated bumps all over them. Something like that. That I kind of feel the way I like it. Uh, that's actually, I don't know, we're kind of getting there with that. The only concern I have, and I'm just talking, spitballing with you guys here, so you guys can kind of see how I go about doing this stuff, um, is this version here on the right, he looks more like a grunt, like an orc, you know, somebody that just go do that, go punch that. Um, this person here is more like, go kill them, but don't let them see you, or go kill them, but do it in style, you know, like an assassin. Uh, you know, if you want somebody killed and you want everybody to see that they just got effed up real bad, you know, and nobody even stopped them, that's the sort of feeling I'm getting with that. I think that's more the Dracula route I want to go, whereas this one, again, is more like, just punch it. It just, it feels more dumb, and I think it's just this, this hunched over look. Uh, however, I do like the, the wings with the serrated edges on them. Um, now I'm starting to feel like I've... What's a character designer I've seen this? Where their arms are like... I can't think of it just yet. But anyway, so I'm just going to continue with this right one here, this uh, big guy. And as you can see, he's just spitballing some of these ideas like we've done with... Like I've done with you guys before. That uh, I still recommend doing multiple rough concepts of a certain character or a monster or a place and the whole reason for that is you start asking different questions the longer you work on something and things just start coming to you like shapes lines um, and I mean this right here with the serrated wings as a weapon on his forearms yeah it's not like it's brand new it's never been done before but I didn't come up with that with this first design you know spending time with it let my brain think of different things cool things that I might like and you know at this point anyway it came up with this sort of look um, so which I can bring it back to an earlier design uh, so all that's to say <laughs> uh, do I have that there okay got a billion lines there uh, anyway, uh, what was I saying there? Oh yeah, just keep uh, keep pushing design. Don't uh, don't skimp on it as much as you can. Anyway, deadlines, all that fun stuff. There's not much you can do. Right, let me just move the bat out of the way. Oh, how's it going, everybody? Uh, hey, Kobo, how you doing, man? Just flip this guy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do, 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 grab our needable eraser. And just a quick pass. Just enough so that we can still see the underdrawing. Grab our pencil. Now we're going to spend some time actually designing this up here. And Ian's saying something that uh, I agree with, at least at in our opinion, anyway. Uh, Jonathan, if you're building a grunt, I'd go with your current choice, which is the one we're working on right now. It looks less human, which tends to be good quality in an underlying. I agree. Uh, Rampa, John or anyone here, should I get Mega Studio 5 EX or 4 EX since I already have Photoshop CS3 because I can color in Photoshop? Um, okay, well, a uh, good buddy of mine. Will Robson, he does 100%, at least that I'm aware of, in Manga Studio, coloring everything. Uh, so there's that. Personally, I use Photoshop to color. I'm, I'm just comfortable with that. I have been coloring a little bit in Manga Studio, but, I, you know, it's just a comfort thing. Uh, if you already have it, you can get Manga Studio 4 for, like, dirt cheap. And I'm, the only thing I didn't like from it was the penciling. The penciling was a little, sh to me anyway, it was shit. In Manga Studio 4, uh, Will, I can only speak about him uh, because we've talked about this. To him, he uh, didn't mind it. He was able to get a lot of the look that he was going for uh, in Manga Studio 4 with their pencil tools. Uh, so, it, it depends, if you ask me. 
and I guess it also depends on what kind of penciling you're looking to do too. If you're looking to just do enough penciling to get to inks right away, Manga Studio 4 is probably all right. Uh, I'm using 5 right now, but uh, they all have really awesome perspective tools. There's not one that's better or that sings over the other one. Manga Studio 4 or 5 does feel more like Photoshop in the fact that you can import all kinds of different brushes, all kinds of customizing and all that. If that sounds like something you're into, then I get 5. Uh, you know, if you could only get one and you have Photoshop, I would assume that means money is an issue. But like once you get one, you usually don't use the other one. So I would feel safe myself. And uh, now that I spent time with it with Manga Studio 5, just because it can do everything, but because you have Photoshop, uh, Manga Studio 4, you're, I don't think you're losing anything if you do that. Uh, Lars is asking, Jonathan, is there a reason why you do the kneadable eraser instead of a new layer? It's more of a, a traditional, like how I work traditionally if I was to pencil anything. it's I would do it the exact same way. Uh, so I would pencil as kind of light as I, as I could, and then I get the kneadable eraser and then just erase over it so I can still see it, and then put my excuse me, type pencils over top of it. It's just something that I carry over from that. Uh, but if I'm doing like something like if I was to finish this, I, I'd totally just make a new layer and then just ink over that. I don't want to be fighting with things. But since I know this is this is just design, this isn't uh, this isn't cover work or anything like that. Uh, by and and I mean it's it's all I'm doing is <laughs> I'm stuttering all over the place tonight. I'm doing what's the quickest that I can get that I can get done. Um, so flipping my pen around and just erasing it seems quicker. Then making a new layer, which is, you know, total nonsense. But that that's the only reason why I do it. Okay, so we got this guy going on. This face, I'm really not feeling it. I'm always a fan when you get these kind of characters with like this. It's like a mix of like a Tyrannosaurus Rex jaw and like a snake. Where it's like they dislocate it just so you can get this really cool drop in it. I don't think these guys look spooky and stuff, but uh, I guess their actions are what's going to show how credible they are. So I, eyes, from what I remember, eyes tend to be a source of intelligence, so they can be. So if we can dumb these eyes up just by putting weird shapes and sizes on them where they just kind of look goofy, starts to take that intelligence away from them. And actually, I wonder if I could just bring the ears to the sides a bit. And the only reason I'm trying to bring it to the side in this is uh, it makes it seem less perked up, like it's at an attention kind of thing, you know? And this guy's ear's been chopped off from who knows what. Uh, one thing that might actually be kind of cool is if I could put, like, maybe on the wrist. Where's the perspective on this arm? This one coming to the front. Let's go to the back. Maybe we can just put like a, a chain. Like these guys are unleashed, you know? Uh, Jonathan, you could try the jaw style that splits open to three foot around. Like the vampires of Blade 2 or Predator. Oh man, that's always the cool stuff where it goes. Damn it! It's just, it's just a too, it's too good of an idea not to do. <laughs> Let's try it out. Like, it, okay, I gotta just change this, this all up because it still looks like he's, he's just like a happy kind of thing. We don't want that. We need to sink this face down. If 
we start doing this removable jaw stuff. Maybe we just put like a design on it like that. That might be all right. Like these are actually part of the lips, these teeth. They're not actually... Uh, feeling this a little bit better. Still lends itself to the stupid look. Uh, Lars is asking, Jonathan, I haven't checked, but did you post last week's stream? I have some issues with pencils you helped setting up. Uh, yes, I did. I posted it, I think, earlier this week. It, it should it should be up on YouTube right now. Uh, what problems did you have? You can just run it by me, and I can put it on there. Actually, what I'm thinking of doing too, guys, and I mean, this might seem cheese, whatever, but like I said earlier, I have that Patreon account set up now. What I'm thinking of doing is just as a free reward, uh, I'll just put my Manga Studio brushes up to download. Uh, so if you were to donate a dollar, uh, you'd be able to get them. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, it might just be easier to do it that way for some of you guys. Jonathan, bring the slime out of the jaws. I very rarely draw, like, slime on teeth. I know a lot of people like doing that. But it definitely does add to the stupid look. Now, one thing I wanted to play with here is uh, just start kind of spitballing with you guys some of the story that's going on with this. So when Pierre shows up in Transylvania, I love it. Like, to me, Pierre, it's such a bad name for the main character. If your name is Pierre, I apologize. I'm not saying it's a bad name. I just think it's a bad name for the comic. Uh, you got a guy that hunts castles because he likes to collect them. He's a castle hunter, and he fights monsters. And his name's Pierre... It, and he's in Transylvania. It doesn't sound, you know, like uh, probably a name like even in Castlevania, Simon, Belmont. Uh, there's there's a there's a ring to it, and it's not a nostalgia ring. It's a it's a it's a well thought out name. Pierre sounds like <laughs> it doesn't fit. I kind of like it because of that. Um, but when Pierre goes here, uh, when he shows up, uh, there's a small village outside. And Dracula has just started to, uh, he's probably been there for, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half. And there's just people talking about him now. Like, they've actually started to name him and stuff like that. And uh, when Pierre shows up, it's more like, oh, there's not supposed to be anybody there. I'm, I'm here to take it, you know. I, I, I collect this sort of stuff. And um, they tell him, no, there's somebody there. And he knows usually if there's somebody there in a really cool looking dark castle, it's probably bad guys. So that's why he always brings all his stuff to clean that stuff out. Um, but I'm just trying to think of ways here when we do design uh, to see if we can still bring ideas back into the script. Um, so right away what I'm thinking of, and that was a long winded way of just to get to this. <laughs> of If I was a vampire hunter or a vampire lord and I just moved here and, and try to think of this a little bit less serious. But I just moved here. And you need an army because you want to start taking things over. Uh, you're you're going to need things to be able to turn into your army, right? So what if we just do the classic thing here where we turn these people here. All these little, little like chained up guys are uh, the first little experiments here, you know. They're the captured people from the village when Dracula first showed up and just started snagging people. So we're going to need some females and males. Um, so the reason I bring that up is because now we can start adding some personality personality to these things. Uh, like maybe this guy had a mustache or something as ridiculous as that sounds, right? Uh, I know I always default to mu uh, mustaches with my characters, but right away, you know, it's just there's some character to that. Uh, maybe this guy only had an eye. Maybe a scar. Uh, what else? Maybe we could actually affect the hair here so we can start doing like some comb overs. A little wild and stuff like that. But these are just something I'm thinking of. Of uh, ways that we can add some spice and some freshness to these kinds of characters here. So they're not, they are just throwaway. They're background noise to help make the character look cool. <laughs> Um, and it also plays into why they can't fly and stuff like that, right? 
um, because they're still people. They're not these mes- mystical bat things that are turned into people. Now, the other cool thing is um, I could probably get away with, instead of just drawing straight anatomy, maybe we can put some trousers on these guys. They're all ripped up. Kind of like a zombie in a way. All the experiments that have been done on these poor guys. I don't even know if they'd be experiments. They're probably just uh, mystical spells and stuff like that. Mystical spells. So maybe we can put some suspenders on here. That'll make them look real goofy. They probably just sag off him a little bit because he's lost all that weight. Now the wings. The bat wings. We'll just get his hands in here. We'll do just two of them. And just so I remember, we'll put a little like serrated edges. like a little bit of a, a Spider-Man thing that some people draw, some people don't, where he's got like the spider webs in his armpits. Those could be maybe wings too. But they're all ripped up. They can't use these things. So he looks gruntish. I don't know if he really looks like something that would uh, be vicious in an attack. But uh, alright, so what we're going to do is move this dude up. I'm going to take that, we're just going to put them in context here. So let's have Pierre doing something with a whip. Oops. I'm trying to find my brush here, it's just gone. Okay. Uh, so there's about 15 minutes left of the show, guys. So once again, just let me know. Uh, the show is for you guys. So if there's any comments or questions, please leave in the chat in uh, all capitals. That way I can get to it and answer it real quick. I just want to say thanks again, everybody that's been sharing, um, retweeting, uh, thumbs upping the videos, and uh, letting people know about the show and the YouTube channel. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's have... Maybe we'll put... Here's arm on this way. I think he's wrestling this thing. Just got his whip going across. And pulling on it. You know, put his hands on the on the whip here because it's strangling him. So we'll grab our needable eraser here. Just clean up the gesture. All right. So with Pierre, he's always got. He's very square, like we already talked about before. So his shoulders are literally just like cubes. I try to keep everything pretty straight on this guy. I 
as a forearm. Clothing details after. Lars is asking, how did you drag the bat pick into the canvas? It opens up a new canvas, and I have to copy-paste it. Uh, that's all I did. Uh, wherever you're getting the image from, I just right-click on it, copy image, and then uh, in Manga Studio, I just make a new layer and paste it in. So I want to have an idea of where his eyes are. So you can see how that fits. It's a pretty small head. Okay, so we're, again, all we're worrying about is just getting that just just chewer in there. Uh, so this bat kind of character here, this guy that we're bringing up, he's, uh, he's a pretty massive upper body. And since we're working digital, we can always resize. So the gesture, I'm drawing pretty close to the gesture that we've already established. Uh, but it's art, and whether you're doing it digitally or not, you're never tied to at any stage. Just the further you get along, usually it's 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 always not usually, but it's it's always much harder to get back um, and to change something. So, meaning if I'm working on a gesture and then I'm tightening up, it's easier to go back and kind of like fix a bad gesture uh, from that stage. But if I do a bad gesture, then I put anatomy over top of it, and then I get into lighting, and it's just not working because I I didn't correct it early enough. That can become a problem. Uh, but since we can always adjust here digitally, uh, there's a little bit more freedom, I find. Those stages, they tend to overlap pretty quick. So I can tell already what I'm doing to these guys right here is I'm giving them a little bit, or not a little bit, but dangerously close to a different look. So I just want to make sure that I'm like ex exploding some of this stuff. The designs aren't final, like we said already. This is all in actually, this is f helping us find a design, right? So we want those triangular shapes here, all these sharp. Sharp lines here. which contrasts to this guy's bulkiness here. So we'll just put a rope around his neck. So how does this guy's face look? All right, so he's got this disgusting nose. His jaw would probably be above it. How do we do with the hair of the ears? All right, 
right, so let's do another stage here of <laughs> erasing and drawing, erasing and drawing. All right, so let's try to tighten this up here. So Pierre's got these massive shoulders. And we're just doing this pretty quick here. Um, the purpose of this one more time is just for the design, right? Uh, so we don't want to get lost into making cool looking artwork necessarily um, because this might not be the design we stick with. And all that time spent drawing on it is, is it's a waste of time. We don't want to waste too much time. We are allowed to have fun with this stuff, right? Let's get his hair there, then his hair gets all pulled back. That Fabio or Fabio Conan the Barbarian look. We're gonna keep the blocky uh, mullet. Oops. So another thing to remember too, uh, or at least what I'm trying to remember, is whenever we have stuff on a character that can help show motion, uh, do it. It lessens the chance that it'll your image will be flat. Um, so this sort of thing here with his whatever this is called, a skirt thing, <laughs> uh, his hair. Whatever you can do to show where the motion's being pulled and where it originated from uh, usually gives you some really good feedback. Okay, try the other line there until we get his his neck in there. I'm just highlighting this line here. This is like that line of action. Uh, it's a little cheat you can kind of do, uh, where you just pick a side like this. This is the, the action line, this line right here that he's following. And if you just kind of make it a little, like this is a lot, but a little darker than the rest of everything, you can kind of just go in there and put some, some line weights on it. Uh, but that one highlight will always be there, or that one line weight will always be there, and it helps really push the eye to focus on that. Uh, so you see as we zoom out, 
that line's really prominent. Uh, <laughs> you've inked like five lines this entire time and I've been drawing away like there's no tomorrow. Need to speed up my workflow. <laughs> Uh, you'll get there. I'm at the same time, right? The only distraction I really have is looking over to talk with you guys. So it's it's much, you know. If you guys are watching me draw while drawing, that's I've been in that sh in that little uh that spot, and it's not a fun one to be in. <laughs> Especially if you got work you got to get done. It's tough. face all up here. Okay, so it looks like we've got about a minute or two. Uh, so if you guys had any other questions you wanted to jam in real quick, uh, by all means, throw them in now. And until then, I just want to say thanks once again, everybody that stopped by. Appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that came a little bit later, um, you can head over to my website, jonathanrector.com. I posted an article just quickly talking a little bit about this project here um, and why I'm, why I'm doing it. And why I th I heavily believe in it. it's my opinion that you all should be doing uh, mini comics as well. And if you're interested in that, go check that out. Uh, and I've also set up a Patreon account. You can uh, head on over to patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector. Uh, if you guys are interested in um, becoming a subscriber, you can help me out over there. And I'll be uh, releasing some free content to you guys very soon. As a way to say thank you for all your support and I'll be doing some uh, uh, YouTube videos shortly as well for that um, and just YouTube videos in general oh Thanos is like one of my favorite characters ever He's just got one of the coolest designs Get a, <laughs> get a crying sick kid to help. <sighs> it's sad that that works too. <laughs> okay, well, thank you everybody for stopping by this week. Really appreciate it, like I say. And uh, once again, for everybody that's uh, coming by every week, that's great. Uh, all the support I'm getting, all the feedback through private messages, emails, all that really cool stuff. Um, everybody that's th uh, sharing, liking, plus one on Google, retweeting, commenting, all that awesome stuff. Thanks again for that as well. And if you did come a little bit late, that's okay. We'll be here next Wednesday. And if uh, you don't know when it is, it's 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. And again, if you showed up a little bit late, just take a look at whatever time zone you're in right now. Just take a look at the clock. Subtract an hour from it. And we'll see you next Wednesday for that. So thank you guys once again. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. And I'll see you then. Bye.